it was that evening um, uh, that we had a memorial out front of the dorm where I was a student, uh, where I was a resident rather. That's Toby Hall in front. I think it looks a little different now. Uh, I know it does actually from the last time I drove through campus, but the point is um, history happens everywhere you are and every journey that you're on, all of you that, that might be on this uh, on this call now. Um, and I was in that day, I, actually, I was in my dorm with a few of my friends with the TV on in the background and we were getting ready to leave for, or I think it was a 9 a.m. class, maybe a 9.30 class. Uh, my class happened to be with Professor Wilkerson, it was um, it was the U.S. government class that he taught. Uh, I was a freshman from Long Island, and I was I felt eerily safe in my U.S. government class. Uh, we were, you know, thinking of that moment. In fact, I was thinking of that moment recently and reflecting on how much I enjoyed Oneonta and my experience in the poli sci department. I actually emailed Dr. Wilkerson a year ago to check in how how's life updated him on my status in life. And um, I think that's kind of, you know, fast forward, here we are. And uh, I was grateful for the opportunity to chat. Um, so this picture, this slide here kind of captures my first involvement in politics, because, you know, a lot of poli sci majors often have that impetus to get into politics, get into law, get, go to law school, find some kind of government job or job being a consultant or a uh, strategist, you know, the, the amount of jobs and paths that you can take are endless. But um, for many poli sci majors, one of the first steps they take in the political realm and, and running for something is um, student government. And for me, that was, you know, the essay freshman year. Um, and these two pictures kind of capture one of uh, my first experiences as a senator for the student association. We had at the time had an annual retreat up to a, um, a camp in the Adirondacks where it was basically a project adventure type uh, at two night trip where, you know, you're building trust relationships, overcoming challenges and adversity and working together and partnering with the people you were there with. So, um, you know, I had these photos and some really great people here. And, you know, that was my first entry in and then, you know, scrolling through the photos more, you know, I was a big shot student government senator, at least I thought at the time, um, I never stood up so straight until I was elected student government senator with 30 people on a 5000 uh, person campus. But nonetheless, I found a connection and I found people that I enjoyed being with and working with and trying to solve problems. And that was, you know, what I thought I wanted to do for my career was be in politics and, um, you know, get elected to office or work as a lawyer. So this was, you know, my mind, the start of that journey. My journey continued freshman year. I became an RA also actually on campus. Another opportunity to work with people, um, learn from people, teach students coming into the dorms for the first time about responsible um, on-campus living and provide programming that I thought you know, uh, was fun, but also aligned with what the policies and, and mission was of the, you know, the residential life department. But in addition to all those um, official kind of um, responsible activities, there was always time for cold cheese pizza and the OPT, you know, the uh, only out the public transit and hanging out with friends in off campus apartments and dorms. All those things happened responsibly. And I, you know, I bring this up because I think it's important to know that you know, my journey was well-rounded. It wasn't you know, uh, you know, one one um, one direction. In fact, it's still happening. I, I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow. Sometimes, um, student government, you know, was a big part of my experience. I really enjoyed everything about being um, part of the student government executive board. And at the time, uh, this is actually freshman year. This photo was taken. There was, you know, at the time they did on campus debates uh, on the news station, the, the campus news station. Don't know if they still do those, but um, in addition to this picture, I still have the uh, the videotape, but no VCR. So I couldn't share it with you all today and wouldn't want to bore you anyway. Um, some really good people here that, you know, I, you know, online keep in touch with and had a really, really good experience. Um, but my poli sci journey took me um, a little bit further. I couldn't find a picture, believe it or not, with all the photos I had, I couldn't find a picture of my model UN experience. But in 2003, uh, rather in 2004, I got an email from Professor Compton, who um, informed me that uh, my interest in uh, being part of the first model UN was accepted, and I was able to register for that class. And what that um, 
experience taught me, and I, from what I can see on the web, this is a program that's still available for students, uh, was that you, you worked with students and, and professors who might not always be in your classes that you took, but you worked on, you know, like a big project. It was kind of like something that didn't have, have a deadline from a professor as much as it was self-driven deadlines and things that you knew you needed to accomplish to be successful because at the end of the day, you were going to the model you went on these dates and you needed to be prepared or you did not look, you know, professional and you did not come off well to represent your school. So it was, it was essentially a job and it was worth, I feel way more than the two credits that they offered me, Dr. Compton, if you're on, but you know, I don't think that was uh, at his discretion, but it was definitely an awesome experience and one that opened up new doors for me and, and got me for the first time thinking like teaching, like interesting, like you're working with people, teaching them different ideas and learning about a different country. I mean, I, I remember sitting in the the ambassador, the Lithuanian ambassador to the United Nations sitting in his office with like six other students sharing our thoughts on how his country could be advocating better for their own citizens. And it was quite an interesting, and through a translator, quite, quite an interesting experience and one that was uh, you know, a great part of my journey. My journey continued the following uh, semester, which was my, I think it was the following semester, I did an internship with Dr. Barbario as my chairperson, uh, rather as my advisor uh, with the New York State Education Department. And again, this was kind of what drew me to this was it was politics. I was going to get to go to Albany. Um, and it, because it was the fall semester at the time, they didn't offer, you know, uh, legislative internships because the state legislature pretty much runs in the spring. But I was able to work in the uh, as an executive internship. And in this case, it was for the education department. And it really had less to do with classroom teaching as, and more to do with the bureaucracy of government and how much you need to know about how things run to get things done. It wasn't about the practical um, part of educating as well as it was about the minutia of the machine running and how to make things, you know, you know, get accomplished. Great experience. If it's still opportunity for students to do this internship at the ed education department, I'd recommend it. But um, any opportunity to do an internship, I think, is worthwhile because it really encompasses your entire semester and gets you to be independent and helps you to find uh, more interest in perhaps a career. For me, it was um, it did help that a little bit. Sorry to interrupt you. Can you um, mention the internship name once again? Sure. This was, uh, you know, at the time it was Dr. Barbario was the chair or the advisor. I, th I think by looking at the website, I think Dr. Wilkerson might be the advisor now, but, you know, Brett, if you want to correct me on that, um, I, I think it's called the Albany Internship Program or ca something to that, to, to that effect. I don't remember the exact name of it, but I'm happy to to share that, but I think it's actually on the poli sci website too, if, if you're if you're interested. Okay, yeah. yeah. That, that program has changed a little bit, um, but we have a, a whole lot of different um, options and Professor Wilkerson is the person to talk to about it now, but you can always, also always come talk to me about it because I can always help. Internships are great ways to test out possible, you know, career paths, but also great ways to expand your personal network of, of, um, of contacts and, and resources. So that's all. Thanks for bringing it up, Michael. I appreciate it. You know, it was, again, uh, great, uh, great experience um, uh, for sure. And would recommend any type of internship. So my journey continued. That was, you know, I, I think that might have been senior year, first half of senior year, if I recall. But regardless, graduation came. My journey continued. Here I am with uh, some of the members of the department here. Um, and uh, Dr. Compton, who was the model UN uh, advisor at the time, um, and just going through these pictures, thinking about this presentation really just brought back some great memories. In fact, I remember giving my camera, uh, I'm sorry, giving the camera to my mom and having her run around and get pictures with all different people that I wanted to remember. And then I haven't looked at these, some of these photos in, in nearly 20 years and or 15 years. So it's been great. Um, I won't get into the details of who this person is on the top with the red banner in the background. That's Elliot Spitzer for those poli sci majors who might have interest in his history in New York State, just Google his name, be careful and don't do it on a school computer. Politics continued. Um, oh, let me go back to this slide because I think it's important since I'm talking about history. At the time, I told you all my pictures were done on an old camera. 
I had a, still have this camera mom, but 2005, I graduated and this was the best gift ever. This was an iPod, original iPod that you could get engraved. It hold, it held, I don't know, 2000 songs. And now our phones hold 20,000 songs and 50,000 pictures. And, you know, just interesting to consider the involvement and how much we've come along. But politics at graduation was still in my life a lot. Actually, I'm pretty red in the face in this picture because the last month and a half, two months of college, I was driving back for one day every weekend to run for the school board in my hometown. And um, I ran, this is over here, I you know had a letter to the local paper, made up a flyer with myself with the freshman 50 that was on um, after four years. And these were some campaign signs. In fact, I ran in 05, I got on three years and I, I retired. Um, and then in 2017, I decided to do it again. And after a year and a half, I retired again. Youngest retiree twice, um, but really great experience and had a really enjoyable uh, time. Learned a lot and would recommend starting off locally if anyone's interested in politics because you meet people and, you know, you see all these people on the news and they're generally people in Congress or, you know, I should say the House or the Senate. Those are represent a lot larger swaths of people and they don't have that connection that you get at the local level and, and learn how to, you know, communicate and just highly recommend if, you, if you're interested in politics, do something local. So right after graduation, right after I ran for the school board, um, and as a result of that internship that I just shared with you a few minutes earlier, I met my wife. And um, here we are out in Montauk. This is that summer after graduation. Um, and I talk about, you know, support and, and having people in your life that can, you know, um, be your better half. She's certainly the better half by a, a long mile um, and is always there. In fact, just came down a few minutes ago and said, hope you, you, you're going to do great. I'm a little nervous for you, but are you all right? And she was still checking on me. So the fact is having people in your life that can, you know, be there for you are important. So um, because of this one here, I got these two here. Um, and this is uh, her parents who are actually on also. Um, so hi, mom and dad on the other end uh, also who um, were, you know, happy to hear about this and said they'd be interested in running on, uh, joining on as well. So they're here. And told you school board, big part, had a really profound effect to me. So this is where the journey took a, took a shift for me. So the whole purpose of this conversation was how did poli sci end up in education? Well, I got on the school board and found as, as even though I enjoyed the political part of it, I really enjoyed, you know, seeing things that we talked about at a global level, even though the school board's not that big and the policies that we put into place get implemented, but school board members and politicians generally aren't the ones who implement policy. It's generally the people who are hired, the people who are your teachers, your police officers, your DMV workers, the people who are actually part of government, teachers are part of government. And I w decided at that point, I was shifting gears from law school, which I took a year off between graduation and graduate school and decided to um, enroll in a graduate school for education. So my path took a took a turn from law school to uh, education. So that, that and this experience on the school board really is what um, what did that for me. So after I retired from this uh, experience, I enrolled in graduate school and pretty much did a traditional path um, to get into education. I went got my master's. Um, and I was lucky enough to be able to do it at the same time as my wife at the time, my fiance, we, uh, she did her master's at the same time and we commuted together a lot. Um, a lot of times it was night classes because, you know, I was subbing and trying to get my foot in the door and use every opportunity to network with people in the profession. That was my goal to communicate and build relationships with people. So, the end of two years of graduate school didn't only result in a degree on the wall, but it resulted in a job because the degree is great, but the job is what, you know, is the, you know, what gets you moving in life. Um, so pictures are a little bit of out of order, but at the same time, retirement from the school board came. So back to that, but really we graduated together, got married a few weeks later um, and the journey just continued. So I became a teacher that got lucky. There was a retirement in the school, one of the schools I was subbing in and the principal happened to see me in a lesson in another class. And he said, listen, we have a retirement. 
are you interested in interviewing for it? And lo and behold, I got the job. And um, these pictures, gosh, they remind me uh, how my uh, life has just been blessed. So it's uh, quite an experience. So thank you again for this opportunity because it really is, is really quite special. Um, my classroom, again, set up and it was because of my wife doing that uh, right after uh, teaching. A few years went few years went on and I decided at the encouragement of the principal who hired me to join an administrative program and get my admin degree. Um, it was a 14 month, 30 credit program, which was insane amount of time commitment, but got 30 credits done in 14 months and um, got my administrative license, waited a couple more years, applied for um, an administrative position, my first being an ELA director. So I went from wanting to go to law school and be in politics to being an English director for students in K through 12. So never would have imagined that seven years after graduating Oneonta that I was going to be an English director. I thought for sure I would be a lawyer um, working in some kind of uh, political job. So it's just amazing how the journey really does take you anywhere that you want it to go. A couple of years after getting that license and by a professor encouraged me to keep on doing the graduate work, I was able to uh, do a doctoral degree um, and graduate in 2014 with that, again, with a lot of family support and uh, friends in the program with me. And it was, it was quite an experience. And I would encourage anyone who is apprehensive about continuing on because education is hard. Just remember that you, you really do get a lot out of your education, not just about the, the the content of what you're learning, but about the ability to think differently, see things differently, analyze. Um, I look at things from, I never, you know, looked at things, well, you, statistics. So someone will say, well, we're 50%, you know, improved in uh, vaccine distribution. Well, what's 50% of what, from where, what was the, what was the number before? Where are we going? How much is, be, you know, you, you start thinking about things a little differently. So it was just a, for me, it was a great experience and you know, just, I guess my advice would be don't doubt yourself if you're interested in doing it. Um, okay. Life continued. Somehow my son disappeared. Oh no, there he is. He's start. he's starting to come on. It's like a slow email it must be like an AOL photo. It's coming in uh, at least on my end. If you can't see it, there he is. Um, life continued baby. Number one, two years later, baby. Number two, family growing family continued and principal. You know, there was other steps in between and a lot of other events in life, but I didn't want to continuously bore you with a million photos, but this photo really sums it up. That's where I'm at today. That's the school in the background. And that was my first day as a principal with students two years ago. So um, for me, what I want to say is the journey is still unknown and I'm not sure where I'll be five years from now, but the journey has been special thus far. And for me, I want to thank Oneonta, the poli sci department, and uh, all the support and guidance that uh, started out with my journey in Oneonta. And, uh, you know, I didn't always know where I was going, but always felt prepared because of my experience. So thank you uh, for the opportunity, Danielle and, and Brett. That's my journey. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, I know, Brett, I think you have to sign off. So do you want to ask any questions before you go or say anything? I don't want to cut you off. Oh yeah, no, um, I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, Michael, I, I do unfortunately have something at two o'clock that I can't really miss, but um, <clears throat> I, I, what I really liked um, about your presentation here was just this idea that, you know, we start out with an idea of where we wanna go, um, but life takes us in all kinds of twist, you know, twisty, turny kind of journey. journey. And you meet interesting people and opportunities come up because there's a principal who's in the, you know, in the room next to you. And so these things happen. And, you know, so, uh, so I, I think that, um, uh, I, I guess the question that I would ask you is, um, do you have any um, advice for, you know, the students who are, who are watching this um, to help them to sort of um, identify and respond and adapt to these kinds of, um, you know, these opportunities that come along? I, I, I would suggest to be open to allowing anything to happen in your life, because for me, you know, I was, you know, so dead set on when I entered school, I'm going to law school, I'm going to have a life in power. I mean, that's all I ever talked about in high school and all I ever talked about pretty much all throughout college. I mean, I remember, you know, 
being at social gatherings and saying something doesn't seem right here. I need to get out of this environment. I don't need anything out in the news that's going to, you know, take down a potential political career or like I was very aware of that that was what I wanted to do. Now, now, again, my advice is to continue to be smart about your social gatherings in college, not suggesting to do otherwise, but to be open to experiences that you might not have considered because you never know what you might discover and where it might bring you. I'd like to open it up to any questions from uh, those who are on the call first. So having no questions, I will ask a question and that is, um, so if you were able to travel back to when you, by, by Brett, um, if you were able to travel back sort of in time to when you were a student and, you know, you had that mindset that you wanted to be an attorney, you know, what kind of advice would you give yourself knowing what you know now? Um, Take an LSAT prep course, definitely. I mean, you know, I think that you can never be overly prepared. You can never be too prepared. And, and um, but, it, you know, the, the department prepared students for, at least at the time I was there, it was my feeling, was for a lot of foundational knowledge and experience about government and law and how law is made. And, you know, uh, Supreme, I'm sure if we have poli-sci majors on, you, you probably have taken you know, the constitutional course where you're analyzing uh, different Supreme Court decisions and, you know, getting the dissent and getting the, you know, the majority opinion and, and finding what the language is and what they mean by some of that language. Because, you know, for the most part, people in the common world, they hear a decision and the Supreme Court decided X is okay now or X is not allowed. But what was in the text that actually decided that? What were they saying in the text? And, and so, you know, basically, I would just say continue to be invested in that type of difficult work because that to me is really what made me feel prepared at the time. Um, I guess on, in my journey, having just happened to take that one year off is what maybe saved me from three years of law school and then switching careers or, or maybe still being in that career and maybe that not being, you know, the ideal career for me. Um, I would just, you know, I guess my biggest advice would just be to stay invested in yourself and in the work that you're doing. That's great advice. Does that bring up any questions for anyone? Oh, I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Um, I'm a senior, I'm a poli-sci major, I'm a double major, um, but coming into ONI, I wanted to be a teacher, um, but I often looked at the policy side of it and how like the foster system, cause I'm from New York city, how the foster system in New York city is like all over the place and out of whack. So I interned with members, I've interned with like three congressional members um, and I've gotten a feel for it, but it was really nice to come here and see how your path has developed into the educational sense of it, just because I wanna have something to do with kids, but I also wanna do like I want to be a change, you know, like, and I feel like with what you said, how you went from being a teacher to then being a director to then, you know, progressing over time, it really like, you know, there's people that did what I want to do or have gone a different path. Like, I always thought like, if I don't go to law school, and if I don't do like, the policy side of it, I won't be a change. But clearly, that's that's not right and I thank you for coming and speaking on that and your experience no thank you and it's uh, I appreciate that and I'll just add I I think at the time for me and, and don't feel this way if you are that for me it was if I don't go to law school I'm failing myself because that's what I wanted to do when I went like I was four years of college was really the entry ticket to law school that was my perspective at the time and then after the four years of earning that entry ticket, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to go to law school. I'm not meeting with what I put on myself. And sometimes I think we put that pressure on ourselves. Um, and to, to an extent, I think I still do that to myself. But you have to recognize, like you, I think you already have, 
that there are other paths that you can take to have an impact and it doesn't have to be exactly what you set out four years ago. Yeah, no, definitely. I felt like I was going to fail myself. Like I'm graduating a semester early um, because I bought in credits and stuff like that. But um, not going to law school was something like that. It was something I was considering, but it was something that I was like, if I don't go, not only am I failing myself, but I feel like I'm failing those around me, like the ones that like believe in me and want me to go and see the policy side to it. But you know, um, I think it all has to do with what you want. And definitely this presentation, you know, has definitely set like a path for me to like, it was, it was really good. It was really good. It really helped me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I could just say, uh, just hearing you say, you don't want to let the people down around you, but as a parent, you don't want anything more for your children than what they want. And Michael could not be at the better place for him. Uh, and it was through all those steps that were taken. So he ended up where he was supposed to be. And I would have never have thought for a second he wouldn't have been in law school, but I couldn't have been more happy. And everyone in your life that cares about you will feel the same way. So best of luck to you. Thank you so much. That's great advice. Thank you. Um, Michael, you know, this is uh, Amber makes a good point about, you know, hearing from you and that the things that you said sort of helped her and, and helped shape things. And I'm curious um, if you took advantage of any networking opportunities when you were a student and if, you know, how did you sort of um, capitalize on those connections or, you know, or did you or, you know, maybe some advice for students on how they can take the best um, networking opportunities and, and use them to their advantage. You know, I, I am guilty of not taking advantage of programs as much as I wish looking back I had because life is hard already with just the normal obstacles that are, are in our lives and having the opportunity to engage with people who are in the industry or the field or the career path or the future that you wish to have when you're in school, just I think naturally lends itself to opening opportunities for you that might not otherwise be open. So looking back, I didn't do that enough. I think because I was engaged with so many other things that I was doing, plus working while I was at school, that it was not always at the forefront. And, um, you know, just in being here 20 years after I started at Oneonta, the alumni end of it has just seems to me at least has come along so far in the last 15 years in terms of engaging alumni to help students like I graduated in 05 and I don't really recall seeing nearly as much opportunity for students as I see now I mean I'm I get emails in fact Danielle I was looking for something regarding this presentation and I searched your name and I think 20 other emails came up about alumni support and programs and like there's just so much that is being provided that just jumping onto things, I think from time to time is worth the, worth the effort. And I wish I had done it more. I did it sometimes, but not enough, I don't think, but that was my journey. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad that you see that all the emails that I sent you in a positive light instead of um, being, feeling harassed with no. emails. So. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, Michael, are you, um, do you have an email address that it would be okay to share with the students if they had follow-up questions? Perhaps you could put it in the chat or if you wanted to, I can share it from, just let me know. Yeah, I can put it in the chat now. Perfect. And I would encourage the students um, to, you know, stay in touch and not just you know when you need something i think that's a big big thing with networking is you know keep in touch follow up you never know where your path is going to take you and i think uh michael your story proves that you know you you, you kind of took a whole different uh route when the fork in the road came to you and you really did great things with it and so i think that that's really um important for the students to hear uh and it's always good to have connections alumni from suny Oneana want to help current students so 
keep that in mind. Um, and I'll just see if there's any last questions before I go. And Michael, if you have any parting words, I want to give you that opportunity as well. No, I mean, I'll say just, I'll end with just saying thank you and, and look at every experience as an opportunity to, to, uh, you know, put yourself out there. I mean, just in terms of this last year with this pandemic, we're, we're coming up on, you know, March 13th, which is the date when everything pretty much shut down. I, I'll, I'll never forget, we had a faculty meeting at 8 a.m. March 13th, reminding teachers that, hey, this is a serious situation that is a lot more serious than we had originally anticipated. Make sure students bring home all their textbooks every day, expecting at that time to be in on Monday. And then for the rest of the year, we were closed, working from home. So my point in bringing this up is, you know, your last year, year and a half of college has either been fully virtual or, or hybrid approach. That is something that you can utilize when you're looking for your next step out of college, whether it's straight into career, straight into another college or, or some kind of internship or some kind of job program that you've been able to utilize and be successful with a virtual experience. And, you know, all the tools and the, and the um, technology that you've needed to grow and, and understand, you're more successful now because of that. So always look at, I guess, every experience as an opportunity. That's great advice. Well, thank you again on behalf of the Alumni Association. I'm so grateful that you were able to share this time with us. Um, I'm sure we'll continue to do virtual events. I don't foresee this uh, going away, even when the pandemic is over. Um, so we'd love to have you, you know, back for a future event. I'm sure that we'll also do in-person things eventually. So perhaps- I'd love to get back and get some cold cheese pizza for sure. Yes, yes. We've got to give you a good reason to come back, but you can come back anytime, but now is not the greatest time, of course. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Be well. Good luck, everyone.